I think the first tip, which I think is the most important, is to nail down your bot persona. So the bot persona is going to make up um, the character, the vocabulary, yeah. uh, what you know, tone of voice the bot is using. That is very foundational um, in any AI, conversational AI product that you're designing. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have that, your bot will be all over the place. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here, we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Welcome back to another episode of Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Randy Kassar, and you are listening to the podcast on conversational AI in the enterprise. And today we're gonna to be talking about conversational design and how you guys can build your self-service solutions. So we have got great guests for us today. And this is her uh, first time on the podcast, but I think you'll enjoy her, the expertise that she has. So she's been doing human-centered design in the conversational AI space for a couple of years now. And she works at a top home improvement retailer in the United States. So Kayla, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So Kayla, uh, we all start this podcast with this myth debunking question. And so for you, you are a product designer uh, and would love to get a sense from your perspective. What is one myth within the conversational AI space in terms of how you're building your uh, self-service solutions, what is one myth that you'd like to debunk? Perhaps a misconception or something that you just constantly have to repeat and re-explain to people? Um, I think when you ask me that, the first thing that comes to mind is um, that people would just much rather speak to a human instead of speaking to a bot. Um, I think that if the bot is well-designed and thought out and um, meets what the user is looking for, whether that be yeah. someone's calling in or on a chat bot, um, I think that experience um, would be preferred. I know that for some people, they just automatically want to speak to a human no matter what. So sometimes you can't yeah. do anything about that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when I when I speak to most people or just through testing, I see um, that if it's a good experience, that it doesn't matter if it's to a bot or not. So. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I think certain industries or certain types of customer inquiries or, or challenges might require human intervention. So it's always nice to have that in the back end, just in case someone wants to go to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I, I think you're right. I mean, I think if you design it right, if the flow is right, if you meet expectations, then you you have your job kind of halfway done there, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and kind of how you got started within the conversational AI space. Uh, what was like the first foray into it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I started about three years ago, um, actually in UX UI. Uh, I got really interested in the industry just with being able to combine my creativity with problem solving. Um, yeah. And I started off at a boot camp, went through my course, learned okay. all the, the good stuff. Um, but while I was there, I just started to get really interested in the whole AI portion of UX. Um, so what I made through my way through there, um, I got some connections through the boot camp I was a part of and yeah. was able to actually start an apprenticeship um, and design my first conversational AI experience. So, Very um, cool. yeah, it was a lot so of you started fun. that. Is, I mean, how did you find this boot camp? I mean, it sounds like a great community, uh, an opportunity there. How do you find it? Uh, digging online. Um, <laughs> there was, yeah, there, I forget what the group is called, but it was one of the boot camps at my college that I went to previously at UTSA. Yeah. Um, and it was just their UX UI boot camp. And um, I was able to speak to people who had done it previously, hear about their experience, yeah. and then speak to the counselors and the mentors to see what it would be like. And I was, uh, I got plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Three years later, you're, you're, you're building, uh, some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So kind of fast forward to today, you've, you've, what, you know, you've gone through lots of challenges and, and lessons learned, uh, you've tested, you've iterated, uh, on, you know, different, uh, iterations of the product that you're working on. Um, 
what would be, let's say, three tips uh, in designing a self-service uh, virtual assistant? Yeah. Um, so I think the first tip, which I think is the most important, is to nail down your bot persona. So the bot persona is going to make up um, the character, the vocabulary, yeah. uh, what you know, tone of voice the bot is using. That is very foundational um, in any AI, conversational AI product that you're designing. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have that, your bot will be all over the place. Um, okay. So I think that is tip number one. After you do Great. that and you go through designing um, all the scripts and the dialogues, test it. Testing is a very important part um, yeah. of the process. Um, before it's even into production, you should be testing it, seeing if there's a way to do it on things like user Zoom or user testing. Um, if that's okay, not yeah. available, yeah. test it out on your coworkers. You know, find, yeah, yeah. Find, find someone that you can test it out on, um, get their advice, their like raw feedback on it. Um, and from there, yeah. the last tip is to iterate. So see how you can um, make iterations just based off of that pre-production testing um, to get it to yeah. where you need it to be. You know, it, it still may not be perfect, but you're putting something out there that has been in the hands of actual people. So awesome. I, would, I would say but, those are my three tips. Those are great. No, those are great. Uh, I, th I think, you know, testing, iteration, uh, and, you know, understanding your bot persona. I mean, that's, that's a new one for me. I, I don't think that's something that's uh some people have thought of so uh, that's, that's really great uh, to hear um and, and super helpful um i think you know when i when i think of those those tips i think the bot persona for me is probably one that is is probably really like the most important in my mind i mean it's, it's something that you know, one with any bot, you need to make sure that people know that they're talking to a bot so <laughs> make sure that there's that clear distinction that they're not talking to a human being and then two, yeah. uh, I, I think that it's all right. No worries. Uh, and, and I think uh, two, I think the other thing is, um, you know, everybody, depending on, depending on your business, you might have different personas coming into it, right? Uh, I know in our business, you know, we have someone, we, we, we target some of the contact center and customer service orgs, and then we have the sales orgs, two different personas. Uh, and they have different lingo that they talk, uh, you know, and it's just, it's a different uh, kind of background that these people have. So I think that's um, something also to think about, right? I mean, guiding people down a path could potentially change the persona, and, and right? Mm -hmm. What do you think so? Definitely. Uh, sorry about my cat. I had no idea she was in no. here. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that yeah. uh, are, are, are listening uh, to the podcast, uh, we, we just had a cat in, in, the, in the video, and that's okay. You know, I have two orange tabby cats, um, and it's all part of, uh, part of the, uh, the live uh, recording that we do on the podcast. So no worries. Uh, cats are, are awesome. Um, so uh, for those that are listening in, uh, we're talking to uh, Kaylee uh, Orozco, and she is a product designer at a home improvement retailer in the United States. And, and Kaylee, thank you so much. Uh, this is super helpful, these tips so far. Um, so if you guys are listening in and you want to join in this, this conversation, you want to provide maybe some tips that you guys have learned within your uh, building of these self-service solutions, uh, just use the hashtag CTM podcast, CTM podcast, and you guys uh, can, can join in the conversation. All right. Um, so when we talk about these self-service solutions, um, the user expectations are, of course, key. But I think what I think of is people want to get a solution uh, to their problem, no matter what way that they can can communicate with the brand, right? And so when we talk about multimodal, um, you know, I want to get your perspective is how do you work that into the design? Um, where do you start off with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a great question because there's, you could technically accomplish a task within multiple channels. Um, yeah. But I think a good place to start off would be um, just really seeing what people's um, first choice would be in trying to accomplish that task. So whether you've done some kind of field research, you talk to maybe some of the um, experts within your company dealing with whatever this task may be or department that it's going to be a part of, um, seeing if people have expressed preferences on what they want to do. If not, um, 
seeing if there's a way that you could put out a simple survey um, to see yeah. what their preference would be. Um, but yeah, I would I would look to see if you don't have those things, um, maybe doing a really rough design in a couple different channels and seeing what it would look like and compare those um, and see what would be the best option. All right, cool. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, again, testing and iteration, um, but uh, doing some early, uh, you know, flows uh, would be helpful, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, earlier, uh, when you're talking about uh, kind of your background, you joined that boot camp, um, and I want to kind of go back to that just a little bit. Uh, and now that you've gone through that boot camp and you are, are at a company that's kind of building a, a self service uh, solution for your customers, what would be a master class uh, that uh, you would uh, recommend to people, or what would be included in that master class? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I've mentioned it a few times. It's been a common thing um, just in my experience and what I've been doing, but knowing how to test your product um, and create the prototype of it, I think would be a really um, cool addition to any masterclass. Um, there's lots of different platforms out there to be able to build a voice product or a chat bot uh, or a prototype. So um, maybe just getting some basics of what should be included in your prototype, um, different components, maybe really good decision points and variables you should have in your prototype. Um, I think that would be a good first portion of it. And then um, how do you actually do the analysis to be able to iterate? So a little bit on the data analysis side um, and understanding all the information that you're getting from testing. Okay, cool. That's, that's great. I think that would be super helpful. Um, I mean, you've gone through certain challenges, uh, you know, at your company in terms of, of building and you've kind of learned from it, like you're saying through the testing and whatnot. Um, what are some of those challenges that you've gone through? Um, if you could share, um, through testing, through, I, through everything and building, through everything. And building your final solution. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of challenges along the way. Um, one specifically I think would just be language. Language is so uh, complex. It's simple, but complex at the same time. Um, but I was just speaking to someone um, about how do, what do you do when there's like multiple intents within one sentence? How do you break that down? How do you choose which, you know, which way to go with what the user is saying? Yeah. Um, so you could have a sentence like, I want to talk to someone to see if this product is available. So there's two different ways you could go. Is you could transfer them or do you tell them the availability of that product? So I think um, language is, again, just so complex. So seeing how you break that down within your models, within your designs, um, is one of the biggest challenges to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, when you think of your kind of day in the life, what is your day in the life? Like in terms of your job, like what are, what are the things that you spend the most time on? Meetings. <laughs> I have <laughs> okay. a lot of, yeah, but the meetings are good because it allows for just collaboration across the, the company, you know, um, being able to speak to PMs and the engineers and the other designers. So a lot of my time, I think really is um, just speaking with other people and understanding um, for my design, what the requirements are, just digging deeper into that. Um, and besides that, it would be doing the actual designing, um, and whatever platform I'm in and trying to yeah. build the map or the flow within yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, most of my day is speaking with people and then I have good chunks where I'm actually, uh, designing. That's awesome. Okay. Um, how do you see your role changing over the next two, three years um, from either from a technology perspective or from a, a process perspective? Hmm. I think technology perspective, um, you know, there's a lot going on with like large language models. So I think it will be a necessity to really understand um, how those work, how they'll be incorporated. And I'll mm -hmm. say that I don't know uh, perfectly yeah. how that all uh, goes, but I'm trying to understand it. Um, so I, I think 
the role may start to move more towards that or an aspect of the role. Right. Um, but I also, one thing I heard recently is that I, I do think just conversational AI um, and how we design for it is how do we create an authentic experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it will start to go into that more personalized um, experience for people. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely changing uh, c- quite a bit, right? I mean, every six months, something new comes out or a new, uh, uh, you know, especially on the vendor side, a, a new competitor comes out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've seen how fast uh, OpenAI's tools have gone through the industry. Um, and so it, it, it's always got to keep up <laughs> with the industry. How do you keep up with the industry, you know, in, in the tools and, and, and the user expectations? Well, like, what are the resources that you use to keep up? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I try my best to stay connected with the other people in the industry. So whether that be on LinkedIn or other social media apps that I have them, just speaking to them, um, seeing how they're doing. But yeah. I try to go to different webinars, um, maybe throughout the week or throughout the month, just learning about, you know, what's the hot thing <laughs> that yeah. is happening within the industry or what are better ways I can um, better my design process. So I try to do that. Um, and maybe if there's an extra course here or there, take it just to continue to learn. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, so this is, uh, you know, been super helpful. And, and I think uh, those listening in will find lots of value in kind of your sharing your expertise. So I appreciate that. Um, so for those that are listening in and that are perhaps they have the design background uh, or, or maybe they're just getting into the the uh, the opportunity to create a self service solution using conversational AI and automation. What advice do you have for them to start their journey? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So for people who are getting started, I would say really understand your requirements from the beginning of you know whatever part of the project you're working on. Um, understand what is it you should be accomplishing within that design um Mm -hmm. understand at what point should you hand it over to a a human or an agent whoever it may be um understand your audience um and how the language will be affected based on who that audience is um kind of just like what you were saying at the beginning of you know different Different users might go down different paths depending on what they right. need. So, yeah, really understanding um, who they are and what their needs are from the very beginning. And All not right, being cool. afraid to ask questions along the way. <laughs> you know, that's always my problem. I think that's, I think it's it's hard to feel like you're, you know, what do they say? There's there's no stupid question, right? So mm-hmm. <laughs> always ask those questions. Yeah. Um, and, and What's interesting, like you say, you do like a Google search on I don't know, conversational AI, um, and you go down towards the bottom of the page, like that's where all the other questions are that you have. Uh, so I think there's there's definitely um, plenty of resources out there, um, you know. So I, and I think over the past uh, few episodes, we've heard a lot of people talk about a few different resources and books and, and people to follow on LinkedIn. So um, I think that'll be a good blog post. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll put together a good blog post of resources within the industry for people uh, to learn about conversational AI. I know we have some on our website, but also there's other stuff that's happening. Cool. All right. Well, um, let's get into the rapid fire section of the podcast. And this is just to get to know you a little bit better uh, to learn how you make certain decisions. Um, I think this is always the fun part. Um, <laughs> The first ones were maybe nerve wracking, uh, but I think these might be a little a little funner. Uh, all right, so when it comes time to calling a contact center for a problem that you might have with a particular product, uh, what who is one person that you think could answer that phone? Say and again, this is multimodal. Go into the phone or already. Go from the chatbot to the phone. What is one person with a celebrity? or artist or musician dead or alive that could answer your call and could solve your problem, could put you at ease, know that you're on your road uh, to success. Who would that one person be? Well, because we talked about it before the (laughs) podcast started, you know, I'd say any of the Jonas brothers. (laughs) There you go. Any of the Jonas brothers. 
That's awesome. <laughs> I, I I think uh, they probably play a little guitar. Uh, well, <laughs> hopefully they don't put you on hold, but maybe while they're uh, typing on the computer, they mm-hmm. can uh, play a little guitar for you. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Uh, and um, we don't ask this too often, but I'm kind of curious uh, from your perspective, what are some apps, maybe, let's say top three apps on your mobile phone besides email and social networks that you use? Besides email and social networks, I'd that's say that, one. yeah, that, um, the top one right now that I'm using is called Rise Gardens. Um, okay. I just got like a hydroponic system and it's connected cool. to an app and there's an AI involved with it. Um, so I've been using that to understand like nutrients to put into the water, how to affect the pH balance, different. So really yeah. cool. Um, that's awesome. And what's it called again? Say, it's say called Rise, Rise Gardens. Rise Gardens. Oh. All right. I'll, t- I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Um, you say top one or how many? Uh, I said three, but you know, if you don't have three, that's okay. We can go with yeah. one. Calendar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't say that as not to include. Yeah. Calendar is like, and you, you're, you're a mom of, of three kids. So, you know, mm-hmm. you and I uh, can, and I'm sure our listeners can understand if you're a parent, uh, how calendar probably is the number yeah. one tool to figure out who's picking up who. Where yeah. are we going? <laughs> Where do I track? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, what's one thing not on your LinkedIn profile? One thing not on my LinkedIn profile. In which category? <laughs> it could be like a hobby. Let's talk about hobbies. Doesn't hobbies? Like jobs, yeah. Yeah. Hobbies would either be reading or gardening. So All I right. got into gardening like six months ago and I'm full force at it. <laughs> awesome. Um, <clears throat> what's one thing that you wish you knew when you started your career? Something I wish I knew. Mm-mm. I mean, I, yeah, I said it in my advice, but again, just not to be afraid to ask questions. Um, yeah. yeah the big there was one. a little of that hesitation in, in, in the beginning of your career, right? You're not sure if you should talk to that person or not, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing here. I mean, I, I had that same thing. I was always kind of the quiet guy um, mm-hmm. early on in life. Uh, and then what would be your, your best day? And that's everything was going great. You had an awesome day. Um, what would be included in that best day? Um, best day would, yeah, just be with my family where nothing crazy happened. But, Cause I have three, <laughs> three toddlers. So maybe no, <laughs> no, uh, accidents or anything like that, which is okay. Um, but yeah, just being able to be with them cook a focused meal <laughs> yeah um and be outside with them at some point and get you know good oxygen and sunlight <laughs> simple that's awesome. but that's that would make me really happy yeah totally I, I totally understand that well awesome um and for those that uh so thanks for answering all those rapid fire questions um and we got to know you a little bit better so i appreciate that gardening we'll take a look at that app uh, i even use the ai which is pretty cool um, so, uh, for those that want to learn more about you and perhaps c- connect with you, uh, what's the best way t- uh, to reach you? Yeah, uh, I'm on LinkedIn just as Kayla Orozco and, um, that would be a good place to reach me. You can shoot me a direct message and I'll, I'll respond to you. Awesome. Well, thanks Kayla for your time today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of conversations that matter. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our conversation with Kayla and as always, uh, definitely go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts and rate and review our podcast. We want to know what other guests you want. We want to know uh, how you thought uh, of this content and the value that it brought to you guys' enterprise. So have a wonderful day. And Kayla, thanks again for, for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations That Matter. Subscribe to our podcast for more great content And if you want to learn more about the topic we discussed, visit unifor.com today.